Who are you? Don't you know? I'm Electro. Electro is played by Jamie Foxx. And for most of the close-ups, animation and effects are an embellishment of plate photography, leaving the actor's performance intact. To produce this effect, animators meticulously track the soft tissue of the face so that effects applied downstream would remain perfectly registered to his performance. But in a few cases, shots like this one were added later in production and required a fully animated performance from the ground up. Once we got to the wider shots, animation generally took over especially where the actor was suspended on wires in the original photography. The director wanted to make sure that Electra was floating under his own power rather than being slaved to a wire rig and justified replacing those shots with animated versions of the character. From there we had to find creative ways for him to transport himself from A to B as seen here in the early e-ghosting tests. An interesting touch that we added later in the process was to have Electra momentarily materialize midway through the e-ghost. It's almost subliminal in some cases, but it gives you the sense that there's a human element in there, a personality of sorts embodied in the ego's trails that have a very direct and tactile effect on Spider-Man as he does here in The Punch. The Green Goblin is played by actor Dane DeHaan. We're first introduced to him as Harry Osborn, who ultimately mutates into Spider-Man's next nemesis in the film. For the close-up flying scenes, the actor rode on a mechanical rig which was controlled hydraulically and an animated version of the glider was added later by the team at Imageworks. The Goblin himself was also built as a digital character for the broader flying sequences, where he's fully animated to look like he's manipulating his glider through a method of weight shifting. Kind of like a slalom skier with independent control of each foot, and it's the subtle manipulation of his feet that drive the glider's multiple control surfaces. These animated details are coupled into the suit as well, with armored components over a biomechanical interior with lots of moving parts. As our digital goblin was introduced into more shots, it became evident that it held up well enough to be qualified as much more than a distant stunt double rig and more of a fully functioning character wherever the director felt an extra shot of the goblin might be needed. We're also introducing a digital Gwen in this series of shots that lead to the dramatic standoff at the top of the clock tower. And finally we have the Rhino, played by Paul Giamatti. A practical rig was built for the actor to establish eye lines and assure that appropriate shadows were being cast on the actor's face and upper body. His head would ultimately be removed and tracked into the animated version of the suit, which went through many design variations through the course of production. While visual development was underway, animators explored different movement styles to help drive the final configuration of the design. One of the creative and technical challenges is that the Rhino had to function as both a biped and a quadruped and be able to transition between the two states in some logical fashion while still accommodating a full arsenal of weapons including machine guns and rocket launchers. The end result is a strong and powerful opponent for Spider-Man and the final standoff between them brings the film to its dramatic conclusion.